han gör vad han bara får Some instruments will, uh, some instruments will work for some people and, and, not, and other instruments. The hardest, it seems the hardest and the, the thing that works the least is the apple branch or the fork stick. That seems to be the, the instrument that uh, the fewest that works for the fewest people. But, uh, I try, when I go out of Dowswell, I usually let the people try something just because they think I'm you know, faking the whole thing. So if I actually give them one of the instruments and it works, they say, wow, it, uh, you know, there really is a pull there. Well, probably 50 years ago when uh, somebody could bow, some of the older generation could bow, and let's say, here, try it and see if it works for you. So I tried it and it worked for me, and that was probably 50 years ago. And I've been in the last 20 or 30 years, I've done, you know, probably hundreds of wells. And, four or five different counties, so not as a business, but just as a, a hobby and something that I enjoy. And it, it doesn't always come out you know, perfectly, but I think it is a, it's a help in uh, dealing a well or finding water. Sometimes like, there was one old farmer that lived in town that's passed away now, but he said, well, I don't believe in dowsing, but I'd never drill a well without having the doubters, and, uh, but, but people are areas where it's hard to get water, they, you know, you, you have to drill someplace, so the theory is that uh, it might be a help. So, yeah, there are people that, that don't believe in it, and uh, so I, they can have their own opinions. Scientists are, every once in a while I run into a scientist, they're professional people in there. They're probably the most doubting ones of well, anybody, but uh, there's a lot of people that are Real believers, and uh, after they get if they get a good well, then it's <laughs> they really believe. So. That is my uh, grandfather, uh, Katie Niskern, and her, <coughs> well, her, her, her maiden name was Niskern, but Weidman, Harry and Katie Weidman. My parents, Peter and Sarah Bassler, and these are my three daughters, uh, Sharon, Deborah, and Therese. This is my granddaughter Abigail and my 
granddaughter Sarah. The problem with the Basler family now, we all we all had girls, so the Basler family name is uh, in jeopardy. Oh no, no, it's just uh, just a beautiful area. It's uh, people remark this spring how green everything was, and uh, uh, the winters. When you get older, I think the winters wear you down a little bit, especially with the snow we had last year. It varied in different areas, but it was five feet more or less, some place or more than that. So it was a, it was a, it was quite a unusual storm. But I go back to 1958, which a lot of the older people realize was a uh, was several storms, and the road from Aldermont from Burn to Aldermont was closed completely like 10 days and uh, the, many of the roads were closed and the, the, the you know, army flew in helicopters to bring in supplies to people and uh, to uh, take care of sick people so that's kind of the benchmark of snowstorms that I remember. <laughs> it was 1958 so many many of the roads were closed for weeks here. And, uh, I was in the trucking business. I used to, uh, I used to uh, transport the milk from the, all of the hill towns here, or some of the you know, milk from the dairy, when there were lots of dairy farms in the hill towns. I trucked the milk from here in the Albany and Schenectady to the processing plants. So that was a seven day a week endeavor, never a day off. So I didn't have time for dowsing back then. I was, I was busy uh, working and taking care of my family and doing other things. But, uh, so the dowsing thing has been more in the last 20 years or so, the, uh, 25 years that uh, I've been doing that. And when I had more time, and so it's been, it's been fun meeting a lot of people and hopefully helping, helping people, you know, people, young people that are, want to build a home and of course water and, you know, it's one of the things you got to have or you can't build. So that's, a lot of satisfaction if you can help somebody, you know, get started with their home plans. Started at 12 years old. Rode my bicycle about four miles every day. Uh, the farmer said, how much do you want, this was a five day a week job, you know, summer. He said, how much do you want a day? I said, two fifty. So the first week he gave me a raise to three dollars a day. <laughs> so, I made fifteen dollars a week. So you know, you didn't go to the mall, you didn't go to McDonald's. Things were much, you know, much, much uh, less exciting than they are today. I mean, we made our own excitement by skating on the mill pond, or sledding, or swimming in the creek. I mean, we did things like that. The things that you know, that's uh, different. The map dowsing. Uh, thing comes in which astonishes a lot of people and don't ask me to explain that but uh, when I go to Dow's a well if a person has maybe four or five acres or ten acres that's a lot of grass and brush I can either take a map that they have or sketch a map myself and go over with a pendulum and tell pretty much where the, the veins of water are which is it always amazes me and it amazes the people, but it, I've never, I've done hundreds of wells like that. And I have to go out, you know, after I locate on a map, I have to go out in the field and, and pin it down. But uh, it's just one of those things that we don't understand. It's amazing. Because it could be in, could be in Burn, New York, or it could be in California. Now this well I had, doused, or I had uh, drilled about 10 years ago to supplement the water in my pond. And what I like to find when I'm dowsing is at least two veins that cross. In this well it happened to be three veins on this plot where all three veins cross right here. And this well is uh, 165 feet deep and it's down in the gravel. And the well produces around 50 gallons a minute of beautiful, beautiful drinking water. It's just clear, uh, very nice water.
can see is I, as I'm going to cross over this vein here, you'll, you'll notice this stick, it will just plunge right down. It actually, it'll actually twist, it'll actually twist right in my hands. Well, this is one of the veins right here. pendulum over here, you'll see the the action in this pendulum and it, it's a lot of energy here. Now people always accuse me of moving my hand, but this pendulum is swinging on its own. Jukebox and you slip a nickel in You can bet your bottom dollar That the record starts to spin You'll hear a fiddle and a guitar With a honky-tonkin' sound It's that hillbilly fever That's spreading all around Hillbilly fever's going round Good old mountain music's got me down It's got me robbing castles, throwing rice and slipping around. Hillbilly fever's got me down. When you get that jumpy feeling and you don't know what is wrong, don't you worry about it, brother, there's a brand new mountain song that's got the whole darn country rockin' with that big apple beat. It's that hillbilly breakdown that shakes you off your feet. Hillbilly fever's going round. Good old mountain music's got me down. I spent a Sunday down in Tennessee and here's what I found. Hillbilly fever's going round Hillbilly fever's going round Good old mountain music's got me down I'm gonna 
one foot, two foot, slew foot, drag, and then I hoe it down. Hillbilly fever's going Well, we've been here a little over 50 years. Yeah, strictly family owned. <laughs> you have to be very broad minded. And you have to swallow a lot of stuff that you wouldn't normally swallow if you had a outsiders because you sell them a little palm salt in her left ear. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them to hit the road, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't very well do with your family. Unless they get too obnoxious, then you can tell them to hit the road. <laughs> so, it's sort of enjoyable up until the last few years when the economy started getting bad. Now we have hardly any work. Because nobody's got any money to buy anything. So. Not any more dangerous than going down the road in a car. It just life is what you make it. If you're used to use well, my favorite saying is if you're born to die hanging, they're not gonna shoot you, so <laughs> no matter what you do, you're not gonna. As I know some couple of veterans that went into trenches and pulled them out by the fox hair, pulled, pulled them out of their foxholes and nothing happened to them. Come home and got killed. Walking down the street. To the bottom of the half, he broke his neck. So, no matter what you do, you're acclimated to it. It's like I could, I could have had an office job. I could have sat on my duff all my life, but I didn't want it. Come June, July, boy, I was ready to go. When I got back out of the Army, I was stationed in Boresville, and I had to charge a quarter down there for a long time. I just got sick of it. Because your body deteriorates. <laughs> oh, I'm 81 years old. This one was gone because they fell off the track and trail and broke my neck quite a few years ago. I snapped it. You can actually feel it. <laughs> so it's very fascinating. Still, after all the years I've been doing it, to put logs on and get the lumber I need out of. Very, very interesting to see. It's very challenging. It's not a, you gotta stay on your toes all the time or else you're in trouble. Yeah. So you can't go to sleep by this job. Yeah, yeah well, that's, that's the main mill that saws the 